Good morning, everyone. We're glad to be with you here with you this morning for Drive In Church and online. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's prepare our hearts to worship God by casting our cares at His feet and giving Him our praise and adoration. We're starting with Come Now is the Time to Worship. Let's sing together. <laughs> Christian. This is going to be my third year as a Christian, but I still feel like it's new. I know a lot of you have probably walked for years and years and years and years. <laughs> so before I became a Christian, I didn't have a place that I felt like I actually belonged. And when I was called by God, um, I had this immense, overwhelming feeling of belonging. And I hope that our gathering here together um, shows the people that are driving by or over at the park or people who are kayaking, like Laura Sheridan, who's actually kayaking over here right now. <laughs> I hope that it shows everybody that gathering is actually <clears throat> very important spiritually 
and emotionally and mentally, um, I think a lot of people in this time right now, especially with lockdown and all that stuff, like they feel isolated and um, gathering, like I, I said, it's, it's super important. And for me, this is one of the greatest times of the week that I look forward to this every single week. So I want to thank my community and my church for allowing me to be here with you guys. Um, so. Uh, if this is your first time here, uh, we'd love to get to know you. So if you would like to fill out a guest card, um, you'll find the guest card over here to my left uh, with the offering box. Um, and if you fill out a guest card, that'll give us a chance to get to know you and reach out to you this week. And we would love to do that. Um, to those who give, um, we are grateful for your tithes and offerings every single week, so thank you very much for your faithfulness. Um, outside of the, the offering box, you can also give online um, as an email transfer at frankfurtfgt at gmail.com. So we also um, have some chairs set up over here under the tree. If you find it too hot this morning, which I doubt you will, but um, it's actually quite lovely this morning, so praise God for that. <laughs> um, but still, we would like you to take advantage of the, the chairs if, if you'd like to gather with us over there. Um, we have been given the thumbs up by local authorities uh, to gather and to uh, sit outside our cars if we're too hot. And also, after service, um, we're allowed to gather in groups of five. So um, don't leave right away. Um, join in some fellowship speak with a pastor he would love to pray for you um, and also if you're new come and find the pastor because we also have a gift for you um, so come and make yourself known we'd love to to um, meet you so let's turn our eyes now to God in worship and praise uh, as we open our hearts and allow the Holy Spirit to come and fill us so that we are ready to receive the word after worship so Let's uh, worship with David and Alana and Maureen this morning. Thank you very much. May God be magnified this, to us this morning. The cares of this life fall away as we fix our eyes on Jesus. May we experience the peace that surpasses all understanding and joy unspeakable that comes from trusting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Nothing can stand against us because God is for us. Let's keep running this race of faith in anticipation of the joy that is coming when we finally get to go home. I invite you to continue worshiping with us this morning.
this morning. I hope you're singing in your cars. We, we can't hear you, obviously, so maybe that's a great opportunity for you to, to sing so that no one else can hear you. I don't know. <laughs> but it's, uh, there's something powerful. And thank you, Mary Lou, for, uh, for sharing that it's so important that we meet together and uh, thank you for joining us today. We're just so glad that you've uh, chosen to be with us, whether in the parking lot or online or behind us in the river or the park. We're so glad that you're here. Um, we believe that gathering together is essential as followers of Jesus Christ. Um, some special guests have joined with us this morning, and so I just want to say a special welcome to them today. I think these are incredible days to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I believe that um, these are extraordinary days, personally, to be a pastor in, in these days that we're living in. If I haven't said it lately, let me say it to you today that Sue and I counted a privilege to pastor Riverside Church and, and we're honored to be your pastors. We believe that our church, that our town, that our entire region, that we're loved by God, that God is bringing hope and healing and freedom to our area. And he's using his church to do that. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for being a part of what God wants to do in these days. We've been in a series titled Living in Victory in 2021. And so I guess we need to ask ourselves, is it even possible to live in victory in these days? And if so, what does that look like? What does it look like with everything that's going on around us? I mean, maybe I should have titled the series Survival in 2021 or How to Stay Alive in 2021. But I don't think so. There, there are things that have happened in our lives, in all of our lives, and it's hit us all differently. We, um, some of you have experienced the negative effects of isolation. Uh, whether you live alone or, or maybe you've been just cut off from family and friends. You felt lonely. You felt down or depressed hopeless even. Some of you who were deemed essential in, in what you do, you've been going to work every day and you've been dealing with everything that would come with that, the masks and the visors and, and, and the gloves and the social distancing and the emotional clients or customers that are unfair and like somehow this is all your fault. Parents with school-age kids, 
it's just become a whole new thing for you as to how to how to do everything online and and um, and I, so I get it. Our daughter-in-law is a is a school teacher. She also has a two-year-old, and and so uh, her and Joel are navigating how they can make this work as she teaches from home, and 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 they still have to handle their little guy. Our niece also has a two-year-old, two and a half-year-old. But she's a stay-at-home mom, and she faces a whole different uh, set of circumstances that that would put her in a place of feeling isolated and and no play dates and and you know mom's groups to try and connect with in person. We all have been affected by these days, these months of COVID. Without a doubt, we're living in turbulent days. So today we continue to look at living our lives victoriously in 2021. I want to declare some things over you today, just as we start. I want to say to you that we will get through this. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. But God will use this mess for good. Don't give in to despair. With God's help, you will get through this. You might say, well, Pastor, uh, you know, how can you say those things? Well, you know what? God gives us examples in his word. He gives us the stories of, of real people that lived in difficult circumstances. And he, they're, they're real life situations. And they're written, scripture says, for our benefit. So today, we're going to look at the life of Joseph. Just a, a, a brief look at it. His story begins and he's in a pit. I'll read Genesis 37 to you. So when Joseph arrived out to where his brothers were, his brothers seized him. They ripped off the beautiful robe that he was wearing. Then they grabbed him and threw him into a cistern. Now the cistern was empty and, 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 and there was no water in it. This cistern was, was ab abandoned jagged rocks and, and, and roots and, and, and deep down inside. So this 17-year-old Joseph lays at the bottom. His hands are tied. His, his ankles are, are bound. And he lays there filled with fear, not knowing what his brothers are going to do next. I'm sure his voice was hoarse calling out and pleading with them, trying to make sense of what was going on. But they ignored his pleas. Actually, years later, 22 years later, these same brothers confessed. They said, we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us, but we would not hear him. So they actually sat down after they threw him into a pit and they ate together. These are the great-grandsons of Abraham, the sons of Jacob. The name of Jesus will appear on, in their family tree. So it, it, it's like in, in, in the scriptures, they would be counted almost as royalty. But this day, their dysfunction as a family showed loud and clear. Maybe in today's world, they'd have their own reality TV show. But their hearts were hard. They despised their brother. In Genesis 37, it says that they hated him and they could not speak a kind word about him. They envied him. And here's why. Their father had pampered Joseph. He was his favorite. You see, Joseph had, or sorry, Jacob had two wives, Leah and Rachel. But he loved only one. He loved Rachel. And when Rachel dies, Jacob keeps her memory alive, if you will, by favoring Joseph. The other sons worked all day. Joseph got to stay at home. They wore clothes from, if you will, a secondhand store. Joseph had had hand-stitched, multicolored cloaks with embroidered sleeves. 
They would sleep in the bunkhouse. He had a queen-size bed and bedroom all to himself. While his brothers were out in the fields tending the animals, daddy's favorite stayed home. And, 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 and Joseph's brothers spat at the sight of him. They hated him so bad. Do you get the picture? The tipping point came when, when God actually gave Joseph a dream. And then Joseph goes and he shares this dream with his brothers. Let me read verse uh, chapter 37, verse 5. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers. And they hated him even more. And so he said to them, please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were binding sheaves in the field. And behold, my sheaf rose, arose and it also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood around my sheep and bowed down to my sheep. And his brothers said to him, You shall indeed reign over us, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then Joseph dreamed still another dream, and he told it to his brothers. He said, Look, I, I have another dream. He said, in this time, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars bowed down to me. So they had all kinds of reason to not have happy thoughts about their young brother. To say that this family was in crisis would be a huge understatement. So one day when Joseph goes out from the homestead, when he's all alone and he, and he comes across his brothers, they take advantage of it. They went completely nuclear on him, if you will. Their hatred for their brother fueled their actions. They ripped off his cloak. They took him and they cast him into this pit. It was a, a murderous plot that they had thought of, not only to kill Joseph, but to hide his body. He would disappear forever. They said, we shall... We shall say, come, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns. We can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. Joseph didn't see it coming. He didn't get up that morning and say, well, just in case I find myself in the bottom of a pit, I need to dress accordingly. He, he had no idea. He, the attack caught him off guard. Folks, the craziness of COVID and everything that, that began in 2020 and now into 2021, it took us by surprise, didn't it? It's not like we were preparing to live through months and months of lockdown and restrictions. Whoever thought we would be wearing masks and lining up to get into stores? Who would have dreamed that we couldn't see family members unless they lived in the same household? Children not being allowed to go to school. I think everything took the whole world by surprise. Not in our wildest imagination would we have pictured the events of this last year and a half. So Joseph, too, was taken by surprise that day. He was thrown in a hole. He was despised. Maybe you were thrown into fear, into loneliness, into isolation. Maybe you have sunk into the pit of despair or depression. Some studies are saying that there, will, that, that there are some that will never recover from the effects of COVID. I hope that's not true. I know with God it doesn't have to be true thrown into a pit with no escape. Joseph's story got worse before it got better. Abandonment led to enslavement, and then entrapment, and finally imprisonment. He was sucker punched, if you will, sold out, completely mistreated. He must have felt so betrayed. I'm sure Satan was looking, looking on at the events as they unfolded, 
and, and, he, and he must have rubbed his hands and said, this is a winner. I've hit the bullseye with this one. Everything is going according to my evil plan. God's plan has been stopped. I've won this one. There is no chance of this ever being something that God can use ever again. And yet Joseph never gave up. Anger never settled into his heart and became hatred. His heart never hardened. <coughs> Excuse me. His resolve never vanquished, never vanished. He only survived. He, he just kept going. And he not only survived, he thrived in whatever position he found himself. You know the story. An Egyptian official promoted him to be chief servant. The prison warden placed him over all the inmates. The pharaoh, the highest ruler on the planet in those days, he chose Joseph to serve as his prime minister. By the end of his life, get this, from a pit with no escape, by the end of his life, Joseph was the second most powerful man of his generation and he saved the then known world from starvation folks I want us to get this this morning God doesn't stop his perfect plan from going forward just because some brothers get jealous and hateful just like God doesn't stop his perfect plans for you and for me and for the church from going forward because of a virus and government shutdowns. So how did Joseph flourish in the midst of tragedy? Well, we don't need to speculate. Some 20 years later, when the roles were reversed, Joseph, as the strong one, and his brothers as the weak ones, they came to him in, in, in dread, they feared that he would settle the score and throw them into a pit of his own making. But Joseph didn't. The explanation that Joseph gives, it was his secret, his inspiration. Joseph says to his brothers in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, But as for you, my brothers, you meant evil against me so many years ago. But God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people. Folks, in God's hands, intended evil becomes eventual good. Let me repeat that. In God's hands, intended evil, when it hits our lives, it becomes eventual good in God's hands. You see, Joseph had a dream. A dream that was a download from God. He didn't know exactly what it meant, but he knew that it was from God. He knew that God had a plan for his life. And he simply trusted God no matter what the circumstances were. There's nothing about this story that glosses over the, the presence of evil. Quite the opposite. There's blood stains, there's tear stains everywhere. Joseph's heart must have been broken at the disloyalty, at the injustice of the situation. Yet time after time, God continued to show up. The torn robe became a royal one. The pit became a palace. The broken family ended up growing old together. The very acts intended to destroy God's servant turned out to strengthen him. You meant it for evil against me. You devised a plot to weave pain and suffering and death into my life. But in God's hands, he rewove those evil plans and he brought good from those same things. 
God is the master weaver, if you will. He stretches the yarn and he interwines the colors, the, the ragged twine with the velvet strings and, and, and the pains with the pleasures. Nothing escapes God's reach when it concerns our lives. Folks, in 2021, nothing escapes his reach. Every king, every president, every prime minister, every virus, every molecule are at his command. Satan tries to weave his evil plans, but when we put our lives into God's arms, when we put our circumstances in his care, when we release control of our lives and we trust God with every detail of our lives, every question and every fear, then God, the master builder, takes the pieces, takes the brokenness, takes the hurts, takes the wounds, takes the unknown, and he makes something good, he makes something beautiful in the midst of it all. He brings it about, Scripture says. That's a, it's like a construction phrase. He constructs it. He's wanting to construct something in our lives, to build something in our lives, in every season of our lives. We may not see what he's doing. That's because he's the master builder. But he knows what he's doing, folks. My oldest son works for a large construction company out in Vancouver. They build, they construct these skyscrapers downtown Vancouver. Jesse's job, before you can see anything above grade, his job is, is to get down in this deep hole in the ground that they've dug and to build the forms way down there. The forms are what the cement will be poured into uh, to form the footings or the foundation. And you can tell I really know what I'm talking about because I don't. But it's sort of what he does. When Jesse climbs down into that big hole, that excavated pit, he only has the plans for what he's responsible for. The next step that needs to be done. He doesn't see the 50 floors that are going to go up above where he's standing. He sent me a picture one day. It scared his mom and I, but he was standing way up. I don't know what the floor was, but he took this picture. The building was still under construction. There, were, there weren't any windows or walls or anything up there. And it, and it looked like he was standing on the edge of whatever floor he was on. And his picture showed that he was actually above the clouds. You could see the ground through, but there were clouds below him. Folks, he could never have stood on that solid floor that many feet above ground level if something hadn't been built the way it was supposed to be built in the first place below grade to give it a foundation. He told me when they work up that high that even a hammer has to be tied off. They, they, if they drop anything, it, it becomes a missile for somebody down below. Because he had taken the time to build the forms, that held the cement, that made the footing and the foundation. It was because that happened that that skyscraper was constructed. Folks, I want to reassure you in 2021 that whatever place you are in right now, God is with you. Whatever you have experienced in the last year of your lifetime, God is greater. Whatever pit or prison you may find yourself in today, a pit that seems to have no exit, no hope for escape, God is able to keep you in his care 
wherever you are. The same God who took what the enemy devised for Joseph's defeat. He brought incredible good out of Joseph's situation. That same God sees exactly where you are today. Even if you've been trying to hide your pain or your weakness, He sees it all, folks. And He sees... <laughs> he more than sees it. He has a plan for each one of our lives going forward. Don't ever think it's too late. Don't ever think that it's gone too long or too far. Or it's too bad for God to heal or to deal with. Don't ever think that anything that the enemy has done to bring hurt or pain or discouragement or hopelessness through COVID or through any other circumstance is too great for God to rework, for God to take the pieces and construct something and to keep his plan going forward for your life. God is a master builder. Have you surrendered your life to Him? I wouldn't want to navigate these days without Him. I need Him every day. I, I need to hear His voice every day. You may think, well, boy, you know, if you've been a Christian a long time or, or whatever, that this, this would be easier. No, not really. I think God designed us so that we work best when we meet with Him every day. We need to hear His voice. We need to hear who He says we are. We need to hear Him say that He's got this, even though we can only see a dark pit around us. Have you surrendered your life to Him? Maybe you've been a Christian a long time and, and if you're like me, every now and then I just sort of slip into autopilot. It's like you put cruise control on and, and, and it kind of looks after things. And then I hit a bump in the road and I realize I can't handle life on my own. I need God continually in my life. Maybe you've slipped into autopilot. I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you by this question. Have you surrendered your God, your life to God recently? He wants to give you abundant life. And you can have that today. Scripture says that we simply need to come to Him. We need to want Him, to need Him. If you've never lived for God, if you've never invited Him into your life, then maybe today is that day for you. It's not rocket science. It's simply looking toward God and inviting Him into your life. He wants to forgive our sins, to wash them away, our, our guilt, our shame, our condemnation. Have you repented for the sin in your life? You can do that today. I'm going to ask you just where you're sitting, just to bow your heads, whether you're online with us or in the parking lot or wherever. If you feel God tugging on your heart today, I'm going to simply re say just a, a very short prayer. And I'm going to invite you just to repeat that prayer with me today. Let's pray. Father, I come to you today. In Jesus' name, God, forgive me of my sin. Come into my life right now. I surrender my life to you this morning, God. I need you in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe you're here this morning, you're listening to my voice. You're online and you've been under attack from fear or worry or anxiety. Maybe you've been looking at the problems, the challenges around you more than you've been looking to God, the master builder. You find yourself in a pit. Today, 
I want to challenge you to turn your focus back toward God. Today you can choose to trust Him no matter what's going on in your life. Did you know that it's impossible to have faith in God, to really trust Him, and at the same time be consumed with fear or worry? It's impossible. When we fear, when we allow our thoughts of worry and doubt to choke the life out that's in us, when it feels like we've been thrown in a pit with no escape, it, it means that we're really just not trusting God. Despite our circumstances, there's always a place where we can trust God, even with the things we don't understand. <coughs> Excuse me. If you need to surrender your fears, your doubts, and your worries, and, and believe me, I, I get it. I, I get the, the craziness of stuff that's been happening to us in the last year and a half especially, let alone the, the normal stuff that life can, can send our way. But if you need to surrender your fears, your doubts, your worries to God this morning, then I'm going to invite you to repeat this prayer with me. Father God, please forgive me for doubting you, for doubting that you are in control of my life. God, I repent of not trusting you when things go bad around me. God, today I put my life into your hands. I commit my life, my circumstances, the good, the bad, the unknown. I commit all of that, God, into your hands. God, today I declare that you are the one in control of my life. You hold my life in your hands. It's your plan for my life, God, that is going forward because you are at work in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. It's one scripture I want to read. Uh, Alana and David are going to come back and close us with one song. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are called according to His purpose. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or, or distress or persecution famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for your sake we are killed all day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter verse 37 yet in all these things folks praise God we're more than conquerors through him who loves us for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want to encourage you this morning, the next time you feel being like you're being attacked by fear or or worry, or hopelessness, whatever the situation may be. In that moment, I want you to anchor down into the fact that there is absolutely nothing that can separate you from God's love for you. And if God loves you, He's got a purpose and a plan for your life, and there is absolutely nothing that can stand in the way 
of God loving you and working his plan out in your life. That's what puts fear to flight. That's what gives us a, a, a peace that goes beyond our understanding. It's because we know that God's arms are wrapped around us. No matter what's going on, if we're in a pit, if we're in a prison, if we're falsely accused, if things are just going bonkers in our family or in our job or whatever the case may be. When we know that we know that God has got us, then we know that he's working a plan. Just like Jesse down in that pit, he couldn't see the 50 floors that were gonna, gonna be constructed on top of what he was doing. But he was content to do what his supervisor, his boss, told him to do. He was content to do what was called. Every day we're called to simply love God and serve him. Every day we're called to draw near to him. The scripture says when we do that, he draws near to us. When we listen to his voice. We will hear from Him. Holy Spirit wants to guide us, wants to speak into our lives, wants to help us navigate our lives, wants to give us the things to say the right time. Folks, I want you to know God is greater. Our God is greater than anything that you are facing right now. God is greater than than anything that could ever happen in the future. And so there's an excitement about being in God's hands, knowing that, okay, God, I'm on. I'm, I'm stepping up. God, I want to be who you want me to be. God, I want to be a part of a church that's moving forward, that says, no matter what's going on, it's not that I don't care what the government says, but... That doesn't change God's plan for our lives as a church, as followers of Jesus Christ. God's got a plan for us to reach those that aren't reached yet. He's got a plan to reach Frankfurt and, and, and the Quinty West region. He's got a plan wherever you live if you're looking online. And there is nothing that can separate us from walking out and, and walking in His perfect plan for our lives. He's greater than it all. Amen? Amen. Stand up in your cars right now and let's sing. Just kidding. <laughs> Amen. God works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. He who began a good work in us is faithful to bring it to completion. Nothing can snatch us out of his hands. Let's sing our God together again. <laughs>
us Then who could ever stop us And if our God is with us Then what could stand against And if our God is for us Then who could ever stop us And if our God is with us Then what could stand against to take a step toward God today in whatever way I would love the opportunity to to speak with you if you have questions about anything I, I would love to the opportunity to uh, to help with that uh, to pray with you uh, as was already mentioned by Mary Lou we're allowed to have uh, fellowship together in groups of no more than five and uh, so I think we can take advantage of that it's a beautiful day if you're visiting with us, and, and Mary Lou mentioned that we have a gift for you. Well, what the gift is, there's a, there's a little store, a canteen, right at, directly across from us, actually, in the park. And uh, if you go up there and just say that you're from Riverside Church and that you're a first-time guest, so that doesn't mean if you came last summer, uh, Mike and Barb, sorry, uh, but Azam and Ann, absolutely. But just mention that to, uh, to Dave or Karen over there at the canteen, and uh, they will bless you with an ice cream cone from uh, Kawartha Dairy. Can't get much better than that. So we're just delighted that you have chosen to be with us today. And uh, if you did uh, get a guest card, if you could make sure that we get that before you leave, that would be awesome. God bless you, and uh, have a wonderful day. Isn't this just a wonderful day, a beautiful day? God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Beep.